Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Fireside Chat with Florian Gremlich, Managing Director and Hub Lead at, office, at the Berlin office at OilX Group. She is a senior product and commercial tax savvy leader with broad international experience in strategy, growth marketing, operations, business development, analytics, product management, 15 years plus years of, of work experience. Previously working at Twitter, PayPal, eBay with a huge passion for payment, mobile and e-commerce. People management, leading diverse teams and fostering inclusion. She's also a big foodie and loves traveling. Hi Florian and welcome. Hi. Thank you, Anna, for, for having me this evening, at least evening in Berlin time, I think, mm -hmm. <laughs> diverse, diverse time zones. Yeah, absolutely. It's our pleasure and thanks thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know, everyone, where you watching us from and if you had a chance to be part of the Women Tech Global Conference 2020 and wherever you hear something that resonates with you, let us know in the live chat, share your thoughts, questions, and I will be speaking through the chat from time to time uh, and we will have more time also at the end of the chat to answer the questions. So I am super excited to have you with us today, Florian, and thanks a lot for your great con contribution to the Women Tech Global Conference 2020. We received lots of positive feedback about your talk and thanks for sharing uh, your experience, being very authentic with some questions when people have been asking and sharing your personal opinion. That was really great. So. I looked through at your bio on, on LinkedIn. That was super impressive. And I, I believe there is lots, lots of things that you're doing and what is not covered on LinkedIn. So my first question is, what does your typical day look like? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, kind of uh, my typical days are not that typical anymore. Kind of, uh, I have some routines, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to these COVID-19 times, so I think uh, and also routines are a little bit important. I get up, I go running each morning. Um, so that's important to keep me sane in terms of uh, mind and body. Um, usually then I try to get my mind and kind of my day sorted out and kind of pr get a plan for the day. And then I need to be open, improvise, because no day is the same like the last one. It's like uh, a lot of... Uh, Situational uh, and also situational leadership needed actually because uh, just uh, a lot happening also on the people side and, and topic side. So I'm trying to be flexible. All right. What is situational leadership for you in, in, in current circumstances also? Yeah, it means sometimes to adapt quite fast. Um, I'm, I've, I've have a, t a team over, over different locations and problems and issues and challenges are quite different. So whereas maybe somebody needs like just an open ear in order to for me to, to actually listen and kind of to, to give some some soft advice, um, others actually need to really hard on um, uh, kind of escalations or kind of issues with other other teams where I need to react and kind of step in a little bit more. But it actually really means kind of uh, acting based on the situation and adapting to it and then applying the leadership style that is important. In this uh, in this uh, moment in time, for, for me, it, I'm, I'm, I'm in the business since quite some time. It comes quite natural <laughs> these days, uh, where it was quite a lot more work uh, when I was uh, like a little bit um, early in my career. Yeah, what was what were some important steps that you have taken in order to develop? Do you do you, do you believe in your opinion that leaders are born with some leadership potential already, or do they become and grow and build themselves? Yeah, it's a very difficult question because it depends on what leader you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, you can also be an authoritative leader, uh, which is uh, sometimes in some cultures also, where this I believe you can learn. Uh, if you want to be really an inspirational uh, uh, leader, um, that requires certain traits. I believe that uh, you can also partly learn, but it comes easier if you if you have some certain characteristics. But it depends, really. It also depends on kind of, I ask people in my team all the time when about leadership, asking, what kind of leader do you want to be? It's a little bit your question. It's, uh, I cannot right. tell you that. It's, uh, for me, it was also a journey uh, and will continue to be a journey. I don't, I don't think I'm nearly at an end. It's kind of it's all in cycles. So it's a process, right? Yes. 
yeah, of course, it's, it's like life. If you <laughs> stand still, kind of, then I think it's terrible. Yeah. What so do you think makes like a good leader in your opinion? We understand that there are different types of leaders, but what makes like a good leader uh, effective? Uh, a good re uh, what, what makes what are some traits of character? What are some skills? And how would you describe yourself? Because you are a leader, right? And how how would you describe also yourself? Yeah. Um, first of all, what what is a good leader? It depends actually really on the situation. Um, mm -hmm. And again, having these different skills and also to adapt to it. Sometimes it really requires to listen, uh, to be there, uh, to be present. Um, I believe trust is the huge component of it. Um, being true to yourself, uh, authentic. Um, people people will see it if you play a role. Obviously, kind of we always have like clothes on. We always play a certain uh, role in our lives, and kind of we are not always hundred percent ourselves. You, sometimes you cannot be, but mm -hmm. uh, kind of holding true. Uh, to those uh, things that you believe in. Um, I, I I believe that I'm value driven um, and uh, I also don't have any poker face. So it's maybe in, it was sometimes a little bit bad in my, in my past because kind of I tried to, to play over that and then it was not authentic anymore. Um, but since then I learned to more or less like take me who I am and then I'm just uh, honest in the situation. Uh, but this again creates trust. Um, and yeah, then I think there then also kind of be more um, let's say harder, harder things, more or less like being reliable, uh, knowing that actually pe that people can believe in you, can trust in you, that you're holding true to your word. Um, and that's also a little bit what I believe in, in, in myself. I look at myself as being like a servant, servant leader. Uh, I'm at a point in my time where I'm more or less like also thinking a lot about management versus leadership, kind of uh, the people management components of my job. And they're important, but they are not my passion. Like, uh, performance reviews or goal setting and all this stuff. It needs to happen in order to make yeah, it yeah, easier. Absolutely. But but, yeah. but to the core of my, my heart, I, I, I want to be people leader, uh, regardless of uh, of uh, the the what's it called like the, the managing lines and, 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 and reporting lines and whatever. And uh, I see myself at the moment as a servant leader. So more or less kind of how can I help people in my team to be successful? Um, not so much like looking after my own ego but really kind of seeing what I can do to empower and enable my team and uh, figuring out the gaps and then being there and giving them also psychological safety. Um, everybody should be allowed to fail. Um, everybody yeah, should be that. allowed to try things out. But yeah. if people don't feel psychological safe, if they yeah, think, yeah, okay, yeah. it has consequences, then they're not risking anything. And no risk, no fun, it comes from somewhere. <laughs> it's uh, uh, so psychological safety is enormously important, especially in these times at the moment where there are so many variables and so much out of our control uh, that I at least want to give people. Right, absolutely. What do you find the most challenging and on, on one hand and what do you find the most rewarding of working with people? Um, challenging sometimes people are people. <laughs> so it's... Uh, yeah. it's uh, and I think we might talk about diversity and inclusion also a little bit. I have quite diverse teams, but the diversity mm -hmm. is nothing if you're not taking care of inclusion, which is not always super easy because it also kind of brings in cognitive diversity where people are just very, very different. Um, and uh, where it's sometimes not easy to actually create this empathetic path to actually that you understand, kind of get to this person. Uh, so it's sometimes they're struggling with where I see that somebody is actually um, need help, but they are not open for it or not ready for it yet, and they they don't let me in. Um, that is some, something I'm struggling with. And I'm also maybe sometimes a little bit too protective of the team because I firmly believe that people are not resources, but um, really kind of that, uh, it's, it's, it's a development process. Um, so they are more struggling with external things when mm -hmm. I actually need to feel the team. Yeah, and what gives me energy, what I think, what drives me the most is more or less like really seeing people developing, really actually succeeding. Um, I um, sometimes take some bets, uh, kind of also seeing that, um, yeah, giving giving people opportunities, even if it seems like a, quite a stretch. And then it's like super nice to see if that actually works out. Obviously with the right support, right? But yeah. uh, I think it's nothing more rewarding uh, than that, at least for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it also 
takes time, right? As you said, we people need to feel safe in order to be able to make mistakes to get to the level, to the stage where they want to get and to develop in their career, right? Uh, what do you think makes a good manager a good leader? We see very often managers, you know, are appointed to be managers, but are they good leader? And what do you think makes a good manager a good leader as well? Yeah, but it's, when, 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 when I started in my career and I started actually in advertising, um, I, and I'm a bit of a, I'm, control freak is maybe too strong, but, uh, uh, I, I was at least one maybe in, in this time. And then I believe I was also not the greatest manager, uh, in the early days of my career because I tried to control situations, um, and mm -hmm. tried to, to, to manage situations. Um, instead of kind of tapping to this uniqueness of people who find just other ways of doing things that I intend to do them because uh, it's, uh, if I control the situation then I'm just then people just do how I do uh, instead of kind of I'm tapping into this kind of really diversity aspect of, of cognitive diversity uh, and uh, that is what I believe many do wrong um, it's more or less like mirroring themselves and then kind of applying that to others and kind of making them things do in the same way that I do. Um, and that's that makes actually kind of, I believe, a bad manager. Uh, micromanagement, not giving enough space, uh, not actually being there for the people. Uh, that also often happens, kind of, especially with younger and unexperienced people managers, they're going to get thrown into the, uh, the pot and then uh, they don't get the necessary uh, education, uh, trainings, trainings on the jobs and kind of seeing um, how that uh, can can be done. They need to have support. Um, so that, that often, unfortunately, happens and it's kind of, they have people they're managing that they are actually kind of, they're being left alone. And uh, I think I lost you, but I still continue talking. Um, and uh, then they're also leaving their people alone. Um, on the other hand, kind of a good manager, a good manager is actually really there, kind of, as you said, kind of helping uh, with the, with the struggle of, of, of work, um, of, of, um, of uh, like struggles in, in the work side and being enabling uh, these, the, the people in the team. And uh, that is more or less like the direct, direct teams, but the uh, leader also does this for other teams. The leader also does it for other people outside their, their spectrum, um, actually also applying this. So I'm also saying kind of the, the, the manager model is for me a little bit outdated um, I believe more in people leadership, uh, which have some necessary management components. So a good people manager, a good manager is actually a good leader, a good people leader and, and puts people first instead of themselves. All right. I disconnected for a minute, some, some challenges, but I'm back. So I, I heard I, the last I, part. Yeah, but you talked about also yeah, micro, just, micro, I like that you, you just kept going. That was very important. So people can, can, that was really great. I think what makes also a good, a good manager or a good, um, a good, uh, let's say, uh, a strong, uh, a strong leader. I mean, we are talking about also personal leadership, about professional leadership is that you, no, and you dare to improvise and to take, you know, that kind of a risk challenge, a new opportunity, even if it won't go smooth or if it won't go, you know, that it won't go smooth. It will never go smooth, right? If you're trying something new. Um, and it's also agility to, so yeah, but that's also agility to a certain degree. Right? The, 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 as we see with the situation today, you, you don't know what tomorrow looks like. It could be that tomorrow you're again a lockdown. So right. how to deal with that? So you need to constantly kind of monitor the situation, just react to it, um, but then not be also just reactive and also kind of combine it with the right um, activeness, kind of having a little bit of a strategic uh, longer view. And then hopefully that brings home the price. Right. I know that in 2012, you did an, an executive MBA. How did it oh, help yeah. you to improve your management? Shall I maybe share more about your experience and how did it actually help you to improve your, your management uh, skills and I believe other skills as well? It's actually actually a funny story. Or I don't know if it's funny, but um, I, I st studied law and, uh, and, and history. Uh, mm -hmm. So kind of I didn't study business or uh, uh, whatsoever, but at, at some point in my life, I was then responsible on the eBay side for the PL for, for eBay Germany. Uh, for, sorry, for, for, for PayPal on eBay for, in, in, in Germany. 
I didn't have a finance background and kind of and suddenly I needed to, to work with these all these KPIs and really kind of reporting on them constantly and kind of seeing how this works. And I decided that I, I need to take an MBA um, more kind of to learn these mm -hmm. hard skills that I didn't learn formally. Um, and uh, it didn't help me so much in my leadership or management journey. Uh, it more or less like enabled me to to see the, the the different puzzle stones when it comes to the business because I needed to to do to, to, um, like uh, uh, the marketing side, uh, finance, uh, people management, uh, right. process management, all this stuff, and kind of this is all these aspects which you touch at some point in life uh, when you're not a complete specialist. So that helped me with that. Um, also understanding a little bit like the challenges um, of other other um, functions. At the moment, we are in budget planning, like many other companies. So it helps me quite a lot that I understand the struggles and the, that the finance function has within an organization. That it's not hard, uh, not that easy. Um, it helped me with that. Maybe in, with empathy in this case, but also kind of with a little bit of knowledge about this. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, to just help you to understand the, the pieces of a puzzle, as you said, so yeah. the components to. One one thing kind of which was maybe a little bit insane, but I, <laughs> I, I did the MBA on the side. Um, so I did it while 100% working. And uh, I also did, before it come, became trendy, I did an online one with uh, presence mm -hmm. seminars, but most of it was online. And uh, now everything is online, but... Uh, yeah. like, how that it time it was like was it like weird a bit or like a 2012 yeah. <laughs> yeah because the technology was also not mm -hmm. there uh kind of of course there was video conferencing but quality was not that great uh it cost a lot more and yeah. people were simply not used to it uh today it's simply normal but it was always a little bit awkward and a lot with chat a yeah. lot with chat yeah, interesting, interesting. Um, here's one question in the chat from Deep T. What is one characteristic that you believe every leader should possess? We are talking about leadership and the traits. Yeah, I think I said it already. The authenticity is, is I believe, a, a very important one. Um, it's, uh, I think, also um, having a certain amount of value, um, value drivenness. Um, uh, another one I believe is important to be humble. Mm -hmm. uh, arrogance is like uh, like a disease to a certain degree because it also means that you are that you are not reflecting that you are not willing to to accept that you are also doing things wrong and everybody does things wrong um, and that's okay. Yeah. So I now name three. I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> I think it's hard to name just one. But yeah, what you said, authenticity and being humble. That, that's uh, super important. And um, yeah, authenticity, that's something that would define every every leader because that's that's you with your unique values, with your, uh, with your experiences, with your understanding, with your vision, so that's what makes you. How did you, how did you um, identify your values in the early careers or did it happen just natural? And like, do you think that it came from your family, from the background, like um, where you studied, where you worked in early of your career? Yeah, I think you're, everybody's influenced very much in all the different aspects around us, people, uh, culture, uh, and history and everything. So kind of for me, uh, I was growing up as the youngest of three sisters and my sisters are quite older than, than I am, like uh, 10 and 13 years older. And my parents were owning a factory, like a really mm -hmm. old school factory, like uh, they were producing um, uh, electric spools. So if you have a washing machine and you cannot wa open the washing machine when the washing machine is going, and that's because of the, the electrical spools in there. And some of them were from my parents, um, but they had a super hard time. It was like in, when I was, smaller in the 80s and there was like uh, was an economic uh, economic economic um, uh, stress uh, in this industry and um, my parents were working around the clock and just trying to also let people keep their jobs mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was growing up with this I kind of I was uh, sitting first on my first machine when I was like 11 <laughs> I think it's not, <laughs> not dangerous anymore in terms of authorities, but it was also kind of to be close with my parents. But I also was growing up with all these workers, um, many of the, the workers without any any education, but they were kind of my family. Uh, and that always grounded me quite a bit, um, kind of being, being 
around the people kind of well, had a different life than I did. And I'm, I'm insanely thankful for that because I think that laid a little bit like the foundation for the the, the, the humble, humbleness uh, part. But otherwise it's like, uh, it's, you go like to life like a like a fish in in, in in a river. It kind of you you see different things over time, people, different people who who influence you. It's uh, I think also finding out to to surround you with the right people. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes sometimes uh, you can learn from people, kind of saying, "Hey, I don't want to be like that." Uh, but ideally, right. you learn from people who who actually are also a little bit like role models for you, or kind of possessing some traits and can help you on this journey. Yeah, so surround yourself with people who you want to be like, right? Uh, not necessarily you need to be like, but uh, where you that help you to grow and mm -hmm. uh, to that also have like the best interests of your mind, which is not super easy because sometimes you don't see if somebody doesn't have it. But it's uh, yeah, people people around you are important. Right, you surrounding. Do you think there is a difference between male and female leadership? Yeah, I think men always have it a little bit easier. Um, that's just how it is. Uh, I, I basically, a, a good colleague of mine, uh, Enrico, he, he gave me this book here. Um, mm -hmm. How to be successful without hurting men's feelings. Uh, by Sarah Cooper, mm -hmm. who I find insanely funny. She's doing these Trump impersonations or kind of uh, uh, each Saturday. And uh, it shows about the double standards between men and women here. A woman saying, I need more time on this. For a man, it is, he's detail oriented. Uh, for women, it means she's slow. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are challenges uh, that, uh, that women need to overcome and uh, which requires a certain amount of resilience. Uh, and uh, I believe when, when women get through it, I, I think it's, I, I know some insanely, insanely great um, female, female leaders. Um, when I, when, when I went to Twitter, I actually went there because I wanted to work for, for this amazing woman, Valerie, Valerie Wagener. Uh, she was the first non-Indian um, uh, female founder in India. And oh. she founded ZipDial, uh, kind of <laughs> now internet. Internet is not, not an issue anymore in, in, in India, but it was kind of was an op opportunity for people to get internet access uh, despite slow. Um, um, uh, slow, uh, slow, so infrastructure, and I wanted to work for her because she kind of taught me this whole thing around servant leadership and uh, kind of uh, was somebody I wanted to learn from. Mm -hmm. um, so men have it easier, uh, but uh, still, kind of I think uh, women and women also take on their own traits and kind of just be, be who they are. Um, there shouldn't be a difference. Right. Right. Um, that's why such organizations as Women Tech Network and other female focus organizations do exist. And I think yeah. they help and they help to understand, you know, that it's not only you are having this challenge right now, that other women in their career had the challenges maybe having and there are women here to help you. Here are questions. Uh, yeah, 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 sorry. And that is something I, I see sometimes and um, it literally hurts me. Um, I talked about resilience and often women need to be a little bit more resilient uh, than men because they have it more complicated, more difficult. And what then sometimes happens is that these women, they don't help other women anymore. I don't understand why, but uh, I, I, what I urge everybody also in my team, I have a highly diverse team, and uh, more women than men actually in, in, in the team. It's more or less like be there for each other. Mm -hmm. Kind of if you learn something, help other people, to, uh, especially here women, because they have it hard and help them also in this journey. Not try not to be like men and kind of going to the same that men often do, like these boys clubs communities. Mm -hmm. Be there for each other and and help and develop, um, mentor. Uh, that's important. Yeah, yeah, I, I I do agree with you and experienced it. Not that many times, but when women are not very prone to help women. And I think that that's why Women Tech Network and also Coding Girls were born, uh, because I thought that there is another way, you know, that it shouldn't be like that. And I think that there, yes. there we should be there for each other that you are telling and we can help and it won't become ever less. The more you help, the more you receive. It, it's like it won't be ever less. Very you true. won't stop stop uh, knowing what you are knowing. Like there will be less. You won't be less skilled, right? 
So I think the more you help, the more like if you're if you are to empower a woman and she can grow professionally, that's great. And then we can create a stronger network of yes. uh, diverse team, diverse uh, good products, good services, and good life. And and again, kind of look look at PayPal. Uh, there is uh, kind of the the the, the, found, uh, the founders of, of PayPal and all these people who then followed in the early stages of, of PayPal. These are all men but they're all connected still. There's mm -hmm. power in this and kind of all these men and, and Elon Musk and, uh, and many others, they founded new companies and then they created new networks, new networks. We as women, right. we can do the same. Totally, totally agree. Yeah. Uh, here's a question from Magda. Uh, how did you overcome the urge to control your teams? <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, kind of, I, I, I still spent a lot of time in kind of my personal development. So kind of coaching was quite powerful for me to, to actually mm -hmm. invest in a coach. Um, no, but ultimately it's, uh, it's, it's learning to trust, um, to let go. I think this, uh, this is kind of this whole thing that many, many people have that they think I can do it best, um, needs to be overcome. If you're getting out of this thing that you're saying I do it best, but more recognizing that yeah, you might have your way, um, but also kind of uh, there might be other ways, better ways. Then this is this is helping quite a lot. But it's uh, it's it's work for me. This is all kind of yin yang. You have like a positive side. I'm 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 a doer. I get things done. That's very great. It's super. But the uh, the the downside of it can be that I'm trying that I'm getting too pushy or getting too controlly. So I need to kind of need to see that this yang yin yang balance is restored. And first thing is more or less like accepting it how it is that the, it is how maybe it may be a blind spot of yours and then work on it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not that easy, right? No, no. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so, you know, we talk a lot about diversity and inclusion at different mm -hmm. events right now, we've touched it. So how do you foster the inclusion? Because you talked that it can't be, we can't talk about diversity without inclusion. So how do you foster inclusion at OLX group? You said you have diverse teams, right? So like they come from different countries, nationalities, um, social, economic background, right? So how, 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 do, how do you foster from your experience and how others can foster in the organizations, companies, initiatives? Um, first of all, it's more or less like, again, it comes a little bit with the control freakishness in this case, it's more or less like accepting that people do different things or do things in a different way and, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, helping, helping with that. I think one important uh, thing here is, which is called individualization. Um, basically when you recognize that each person has a unique quality, um, and, uh, you, you focus on the differences between individuals instead of making the, these differences the same. Um, and that is something where if you're putting together a team and we're also seeing that you have, again, not the same, same people, but maybe some people also have this quality. They help with opening the eyes of, of other people. If you're having a team of people with just only actionists, the people who try to get things going and kind of with little empathy, um, then you can have a lot of gender and cultural diversity, but it will not foster because they, they just do things their own way. So you need to see that they have a good team fit with these different traits when it comes to character also. Um, so that means also kind of investing really in, in, in hiring. Don't let uh, yourself blind um, just uh, to hire for certain criteria. Yeah, I need to have this quota and this quota. Obviously, quotas are to a certain distinct important in order to, that we are not kind of, that we are challenged and doing the right decisions, but it's even more important that we are also having the people who can actually deal with it. And um, other other aspects is more or less like I'm investing quite a lot in team building and team fit, mm -hmm. basically that we really, um, that people are at least in the, the, their own team, that they are not looking at each other as competition, but more as really peers, that there's a network of trust where it should be okay to be different and also show this. And ideally other people, they learn that they can learn from each other. Um, that um, there's uh, the traits I have, that's fine, right? But I maybe also wanna, wanna improve some of the traits I'm, I'm, I don't have that much. So fostering this climate um, and, uh, and again, kind of also kind of saying that is completely okay to, to try things out, um, even if they don't work. 
Um, this uh, psych, I had said it before, psychological safety. I think if you if you have that, then also kind of um, inclusivity is is clear. And uh, last but not least, uh, I have a zero acceptance uh, for things um, that feel people make people feel unsafe or even harassed. And this stuff still happens. It still happens that there are sometimes bad comments which are racist or which are going against women. Um, you see it in almost every company, but what, what you can show is more or less like a zero acceptance when it happens. And really kind of set this example. Um, if somebody is overstepping, uh, and that can also be to make somebody even uh, feel, not feel feel good in themselves and highlighting it and also make p other people to to speak up. Right. So whenever But it's, you... it's complicated. Yeah, it's it complicated. You know, it, it made me think that it's probably a process. It's very hard to eradicate. Just if you hear one comment here, one comment there, and it's been repetitive. You know, and you need to make people understand that this this not right. Like ma 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 male jokes are not good around women, and and or like whatever comments there could be. Especially when you want to work with different nationalities, and it's international company, right? And, and, and look, look, uh, look around. Look at the U.S., for example. Um, kind of what we're seeing in many, many areas at the moment. It's like a lack of inclusivity, um, and inclusivity create this requires a constant work. Um, but again, kind of these these jokes, they are they are still happening on both sides. But and, and even worse things. Um, yeah. So speak up and uh, don't don't let it get to you and uh, see that it, if you see it, for example, in your company, uh, bring it up with, uh, with your manager or HR and kind of see that you protect also others, uh, even yeah, if you maybe yeah. think, ah, I can stand it. Yeah, it's not okay. And, you know, we've talked at, at, at one of our fireside chat with uh, Michelle uh, King from, she's the director of inclusion at, um, at Netflix. And she said that be an ally whenever you hear someone like says, don't just, don't just maybe this person is not feeling safe uh, to speak up right now because maybe this person is new, just started a job and like, you know, start to understand. So speak up and be an ally for the people who are in the situation. So that's that's also important to to know and, and to consider in different situations like that. Um, so how do you think that how important is company culture to you and what measures do you take to maintain your desired culture? First of all, company culture is immensely important to me. Um, kind of, uh, as, as you can imagine, kind of with, with, also with a certain leadership style could not exist in every company. So I could, there are many very old school German companies, for example, very hierarchical. Um, I'm not sure if I would be the best fit for that. Um, so I, I, I need a, company culture that also fits to my personal values and kind right. of to my, my leadership values. Um, insanely important. I think uh, even maybe the most important thing to look after when, when choosing a job um, is the, the company culture. Because it, it often comes top down and it influences every function if done right. Or even worse, the lack of a company culture, uh, kind of the... Uh, Everybody eats everybody. That's even worse. Uh, also, kind of uh, can become quite toxic quite fast. Um, uh, sorry, now I kind of I lost you with the second part of the question. I'm super sorry. You asked uh, me about the culture. And yeah, it's basically what measures do you take to maintain the desired culture? So let's say you have your vision, right? That's how you think the things should be, and you have like okay, that everyone should be included, right? Everyone should feel has have this psychological safety. So how do you how do you basically work towards the desired culture? And also this is like a recommendation for maybe aspiring leaders or leaders who are on the way to be uh, managers, for example. So how they, they can actually communicate it to their team and to mm -hmm. foster it. This uh, yeah. culture. Yeah, first of all, live it every day. Um, also kind kind of really I, I see myself as a role model mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I need to be this kind of more or less like if, if you're in a certain certain role people also look sometimes a little bit up to you they look for at you for advice if I do something completely wrong and against the company culture I'm setting an utterly bad example 
Um, and uh, if I do it constantly, then kind of I'm also ruining company culture. So it's more or less like living each every day, but also being clear uh, that you have a certain responsibility um, as, as a leader, meaning that you need to set the right examples um, and live true by it um, each day. Uh, so I think that's, that's imperative. Um, then also sometimes accepting that you cannot control everything. We talked about the control um, um, topic. I can influence my team a lot. I can also influence others who want to, um, but I cannot influence com the complete company culture. OLX is too big for that or any other company. So I, I can do my part, um, but also need to accept that not everything is in my hands. And then there's more or less like being kind of a little bit like the, the compass maybe for the, the team and um, being there and kind of what, what this means uh, when sometimes culture uh, goes like that. It's, this happens, it's completely normal in, in every organization. So I, I also accept what you cannot influence at times. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, absolutely. Be an example of what you want. Not just say, let's do this. So these are, these are the things, these are the values. Are you communicating? Are you the example? Are you leaving your values, right? Yes, so if you course. are, then people probably will follow and will set it as a standard, as a thing to, uh, that's the same as a bad behavior, for example, or that's, that's yeah, uh, for sure. I'm, I'm also... I'm also trying to do one thing. It's more or less like um, I have a saying. I'm always saying I have an opinion on almost everything, but it doesn't matter much. So I'm I'm also trying to to <laughs> to the, the way I lead. To uh, obviously sometimes things come with experience, right? I don't I don't need to do a research to know that I'm breaking a leg or something worse when I'm right. falling out of the window, right? Um, but uh, otherwise, it's more or less I'm trying to back things up. Uh, with rational arguments, being it data points for whatever things, being it can be quantitative, just uh, or talking to people, um, and not just uh, kind of going to direction because I just woke up and had a great idea under the shower, and that happens often enough too because then you're disempowering teams again, and they don't understand why you're doing things because yeah. the mood can change, and then kind of then you have a different idea. So it's more or less like um, making it also rational and understandable to a certain degree. Um, transparent that also helps at least yeah. here is a question from Yukika she's asking how do you keep going moving forward when you face with some setbacks what is your source of energy are there any tips so when you're not feeling you know like you have lots of energy to do the things that maybe you have to do so what motivates you what gives you energy yeah, personally, I, I, I'm quite lucky that I'm a relatively resilient, more glass half full person. So I'm, I'm usually quite optimistic and uh, it's like a personality trait, I guess. Mm -hmm. and I'm lucky to, to, to have this. Uh, um, and uh, so, the, but that is not what was helping you in this moment. I, I think a certain amount of optimism, though, can be learned. Um, I, I think it's much easier to always see the, the, the problems and the challenges. Um, instead of looking kind of, okay, these are the opportunities. And even if I get this bad feedback, even if this was messed up, okay, what, what can I learn out of it? Uh, what can I do better uh, the next time? Not seeing it as a person failure or um, like I did something wrong. So don't take it personal. That also helps. And just look at everything in life as a learning opportunity. Everything that you do, um, that also helps. Um, then kind of, I already said it, like people give me an immense amount of energy. Um, it's uh, surrounding me with people um, that give me energy and minimize the people that drain my energy. Obviously, sometimes you need to, yeah, also sometimes are confronted with toxic behaviors and people around you. But it, trying to minimize those helps for sure. Um, one thing I do quite regular um, is more or less also kind of doing a list, kind of do it maybe once a month. Um, in this month, what drained my energy, what gave me energy to just reflect on this mm -hmm. uh, kind of and seeing, kind of writing this down. Because sometimes I don't even know or knew that something was draining me. So then also kind of then seeing then I know how to deal with it or learn how to deal with it. And maybe I can also actively avoid it without running away. Um, because uh, sometimes we also kind of be seeking the fight. It also happens, but maybe we, we, we don't need to. Um, yeah, and uh, last but not least, um, also kind of, I, I work a lot, but I love vacation. 
uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, weekends are uh, quite uh, sacred to me, uh, same as evenings. So I, I'm, I'm not working until 10 uh, if I can avoid it because you need to have a balance a little bit in, in, in life. And I, I kind of see that I see my friends often have got good food and things. Uh, and then also go running in the morning, kind of these things uh, make me fresh for the day, even if it was maybe a shitty day the day before. It sounds like you have a good work-life balance. Is there such thing in your personal, like you know, perception, opinion? Because of what you're describing, you know, you you do the work that you love. You meet with friends, evenings and weekends, and I think this, from what I'm I'm, I'm hearing, gives also good balance of good energy. And I can totally relate to the to the positivity that you have shared because I'm I'm also like a person that believes that. Um, you know, there is always an opportunity, even in a crisis, in, in some bad situation, and you just need to look from the other side of it. Like everyone makes yeah. mistakes. Okay, you messed up, so what? I mean, next time you know what not to do. If you don't do anything, no, nothing will happen, right? Like being like up in the air or like not making a decision, not making a move sometimes can paralyze you and then you won't be able to do anything to move forward anyhow. But good tips for making the what you know drains your energy because I always also not always but sometimes can find myself like I'm sometimes not feeling like you know myself. So what really irritates me and what you're writing like okay just write down what what like pisses you off like is that was that that you need to analyze and to reflect and to understand what it is actually right. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes it can happen that you're actually in a, in a situation that you can be in a work situation where you are simply not happy. Uh, mm. because some, maybe the circumstances around you are not perfect for you anymore. Maybe they were never um, never perfect. And, and sometimes then I, I see people that are struggling, they're trying to, to deal with the situation. But sometimes, again, things are out of their control. And it's also a question on how to take the consequences on it, which is, again, also okay. You need to know what the source is, kind of what uh, what 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 keeps you down, and and uh, I think one one thing we might uh, learn with the uh, COVID nineteen, and uh, it's more or less like I think for leadership, it's like uh, a deal playground. You see, kind of really kind of before it was like a little bit blurry, but now you see very very much the good leaders and you see the bad leaders, and I'm also kind of learning from these examples in good and bad times. But also learning, learning from yourself, because I think uh, everybody in these times needs need to step up uh, and kind of see how they do their part when it comes to to leadership, meaning kind of uh, leading the the topics areas, are just simply kind of uh, leading where other people's at the moment are down, because uh, also like it's it's draining, mentally draining on many people. So good good playing ground. Again, pass, pass her full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is one thing that you're most proud of as a leader in your career? Was there some big moment? I believe there were many moments. Is there something that you remember that maybe you influenced somehow someone in a positive way and that you're most proud of or some achievement of yours in your through your career? Just uh... It's difficult because um, I... I, I, I there wouldn't be one thing that uh, come to mind. Uh, it's uh, like content-wise, kind of. I'm I'm proud to kind of have have, have delivered some quite difficult difficult uh, projects. I, I I worked, for example, at PayPal, and I kind of uh, worked on a, on a new um, payment product, which was called Pay PayPal Plus, as a PM. And uh, kind of there were, I believe, three PMs working on on that topic before me. And since it was so, it was political and quite complex and kind of, I, I was able to deliver it. Um, I was not the best leader at, uh, at this point in time, but uh, it learned me a lot on how to get a better leader. So I'm, I'm proud of this uh, delivery. Um, I'm proud of my current team at the moment, who's, uh, despite that we're having uh, COVID made, made everything a little more complicated when it comes to priorities and kind of changing priorities, because some things might not be that important anymore, um, both net wise uh, pre COVID than they are now. And they are still, but they're still taking on course. And where I see myself a little bit like, a, like still as a captain on a, on a ship who, who helps it go through these rocky um, seas and that nobody's kind of falling off the ship. So I'm proud of that. 
Um, but ultimately, it's more the smaller things. Like, uh, like it's not just one this big thing no. that you did in life, no. and you're like done. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 no. different. Small small victories on the way, small achievements, small moments that you are proud of, right? Maybe it's it's not. It doesn't sound big, but it's big for you or big on in, on this day, on this occasion, this year, this month, this week, right? So it's important to notice them and celebrate them. Yeah. Magda is asking a really good point, except uh, what you can't change. Uh, what about choosing your battles? <laughs> it's quite similar to that. No, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a PM by heart, a product manager by heart, and kind of part of that is more or less also prioritizing kind of uh, mm -hmm. what, is, uh, what is important, um, what is not as important. Uh, and uh, sometimes I uh, then also kind of see what is the biggest, has the biggest uh, effect and, 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 and impact. So that drives a little bit of that. Um, sometimes also a little bit uh, common sense. I, sometimes th there would be things that I would, I feel I would need to get into, but then there are so many people and so many actors already on this battleground. That I'm saying, A, I cannot win this. Um, it's more or less like, uh, even if I should do it, then, then I don't get involved. Um, because, uh, it's, uh, I've, I would never win it and I would be quite bruised, um, after that. And then I'm more or less like rather focus, um, on, on something else where I can actually deliver some value, uh, instead of uh, burning bridges, which might then also be bad for my team. It's uh, it's a topic to topic discussion and requires a little bit of common sense. Separate files, I said. <laughs> yeah, but I think ultimately, and, and I think everybody knows this feeling a little bit. Then something is happening. You believe, how can this happen? And yeah. what are these people doing? And, and, and I need need to do something. Sometimes it's gut driven. Sometimes it's emotions. Um, sometimes it's ego. Um, when this is happening, I'm always like, like, okay, Flori, breathe, <laughs> and uh, kind of see that you're. Don't don't be too impulsive um, mm -hmm. and uh, just see and kind of assess the situation uh, on a logical way, and then maybe the world looks a little bit different. And uh, because maybe it was not my game, my 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 battle to take. Actually, I was just emotional. Do you think being less impulsive also comes with experience, or it's like character related, temperament related? I it, it comes a bit with experience. I, I believe I kind of I. I'm a little bit calmer than I am like uh, 10 years ago, which is good. Like 10 years ago was like everywhere. I was uh, smoking also and kind of drinking a lot of coffee and I had a lot of energy. I still have a lot of energy, but I learned it to control a little bit more. So yeah, it comes a little bit with experience, um, but it comes also with work. Uh, so kind of, uh, I, I am still constantly trying to, to develop myself um, based on reflection, uh, really seeing um, kind of, uh, how 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 is it going actually with me and inside me and, and kind of in in a, in a situation uh, and working on topics that's kind of st still constant and uh, from for me that um, kind of impulsiveness it, uh, depending on my mood it can be harder to to <laughs> to not be impulsive than 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 other days and that's also okay I, I'm not a robot uh, hopefully nobody is absolutely um, so it's like uh, and uh, yeah, but I think it's a, it's a common understanding that we, we need to accept that we also need to constantly reflect, work on each other, find people who are, who do you who you trust to give you feedback. Um, and uh, that also helps and kind of, or sometimes we'll say, hey, maybe take a step back right now. It's like uh, going mm -hmm. too far. If it's somebody who trusts you, who, who you or you trust, and, and has your back, that's powerful. It's really powerful. Now you're right now talking about your partner, your mentor, your friends, or a combination of people. That combination, combination. Yeah. yeah, I know that you're also a mentor at, at, uh, near, at uh, Faster Capital. Uh, so when it comes to mentorship, what is the most rewarding thing about mentorship in your opinion? And who were your important mentors in your life? Hmm. Maybe start with the letter. Kind of, a, um, I actually had my first mentor like uh, almost ten years ago, and he's still somebody who, with whom I'm close contact uh, with, mm -hmm. uh, even when we switch companies over over several times. And still How somebody who actually. Person? 
I it was actually over a, um, they, they started a female mentoring um, mm -hmm. at, at PayPal. And mm -hmm. so I was one of the lucky ones that got somebody quite senior um, uh, who said that he would like to be my mentor and kind of if I want to. Um, and uh, that was uh, when when I had first the privilege of, of, of having having a mentor and since then. Um, I'm uh, same as with coaching, mentoring is super powerful. Yeah. Uh, so kind of also in my team, everybody has a mentor or is a mentor uh, mm -hmm. to hopefully various people um, and different people they can learn from and also kind of ideally it's a win-win situation. Um, no, but uh, mentoring is, uh, yeah, kind of mentoring often just means you have somebody who's actually an open ear uh, with whom you can come with questions and kind of see uh, that uh, uh, yeah, that who can give you some advice uh, and, and important life questions. Uh, actually, m one of my mentors, even if he doesn't know it, is more one, one close co colleague of mine uh, at, at, at OLX, um, who is more or less like somebody I can come with every topic uh, and who I know I can trust mm -hmm. and who gives me good advice, but also the, the other way around. Um, but you need to be able to open up and, and, and trust these people. That's uh, that's uh, one basic thing, because otherwise, if you're just talking about like blabby blabby stuff or like bubbly stuff, then it doesn't help anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agree. Here's a question from Natalia: If your boss is a woman, how would you influence her to be more sensitive and supportive to other women employees in this in this context? So if I understand it correctly, kind of you have somebody who's not that sensitive towards women. Apparently, and, uh, yes, Natalia, if you can provide us some more uh, details about this. But um, the question is probably that uh, there is a female manager, right? A woman who is a boss and she's not showing the support towards other women. How do you think? What should be done about the situation? Should you quit the job? Should you ask her to be more sensitive? what maybe you could advise in this situation? Ah, oh, it's again, a tip, it's a not, not an easy topic. Um, uh, especially when it's your manager. Mm, exactly. uh, but uh, I, 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 it depends if that people, uh, if that person is, is open to feedback, I would try to give feedback, open feedback. Um, mm. uh, also kind of seeing if, if you feel, if, is it objective or do you just feel that uh, she is kind of unnecessary hard to you or is it is it really unfair um also kind of seeing that you're basically validating uh this this impression um then kind of uh, if that person is open to to listen then hopefully as a good manager uh she's open for feedback or maybe sharing why she's doing certain things in a certain way that also often helps uh, kind of this empathy level that you're basically knowing why a person is doing such things. But uh, if uh, if your styles are clashing too much, then I think another way is more or less like getting out of this team, of course. Um, and this happens sometimes. It's, uh, uh, it's The saying is not without reason that uh, people mostly leave um, managers um, less than companies. Because, uh, there are quite a few bad managers out there, female and male. Um, then it's uh, like, uh, discuss uh, with the, the, the boss of the boss uh, mm -hmm. at some point once you gave this feedback and then see maybe there are other op 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 uh, options in within the company um, as, as a last resort. Yeah, It happens, unfortunately. That you had like a bad manager and that you had to leave a company or not really? I have to admit that I never left the company or company because of a bad manager, but I had a few. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, and again, kind of me resilience helped a little bit. Then I kind of and I just took my own path and minimized <laughs> contact as far as I could, um, and so, saw that I kind of found other people from, from whom I could learn uh, and help me with. Not sure if that is necessarily the right approach. Um, and uh, sometimes this was also eating on me, so I'm, I'm not sure that I would should give that as an advice. Uh, but uh, yeah, there are bad managers and uh, depending on the company culture, uh, you can give this feedback or you might not be able to give that feedback. Coming back to this whole thing, mm -hmm. explore the company culture before you go somewhere. Um, and uh, there are even 
networks where you can explore this a little bit in the beginning, like Blind, for example, is a social uh, network for 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 uh, yeah for the tech industry. It's mainly America, but it's also India. It's a little bit Europe, um, and you can read a lot about company culture or Glassdoor. Uh, inquire via other people uh, who who know these companies. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. That helps. Yeah. Great. Um, maybe one last piece of advice or several. What is, would be your last message to everyone who's listening to us? And people are coming from all walks of life. Some of them are at, in the beginning of their career. Some of them are in the middle. Some of them are already accomplished uh, leaders, uh, women working in tax, tax specialists. What would be your final message to them? what you maybe wish you knew years back that would help you right now to be where you are or maybe you wouldn't want to change anything so what would be your final message i had tons of mistakes i have plenty and i still do um and, uh, no but uh, i said it in the uh in the conference already it's more or less like be yourself and know who that is um that that helps quite immensely it's like uh Uh, I'm, I'm sometimes amazed how many people um, kind of do not reflect and do not see kind of uh, do not look inside and kind of see how they react to certain certain things. So reflection and then ideally finding out who who you are and maybe also kind of who you want to be. Um, kind of what what are the areas which you want to want to work on and constantly being open um, to to work on those. Um, I, I always looked at my, my career, but also kind of when I look at leadership as a toolbox. Um, like in the beginning, I got, got a screwdriver, then and, and then I got a hammer, and like then I, at some point later in life, I realized, hey, the screwdriver was not good, and I substituted with a, with a much nicer model. And, and then I have this box with all these things that I can take out depending on the situation. Um, but that, that's my approach. That's how I kind of see it. Uh, I still see it that way. But that also helps a little bit. And you identify what are the tools you want to have in your toolbox and what are important. Um, and I strongly urge to also find out what, what the values are uh, you want to want to do your job with. Ultimately, we're all not mercenaries. We are also in here to uh, to, to influence something, to, to be recognized, rewarded to a certain degree, but also to, to pave the way for others. Um, and make it easier for others, better for others. Um, and uh, when you do this, then, the, then you're also a multiplicator. Uh, then you're not a leader of just of your surroundings. So they also kind of influence future leaders. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, maybe everybody who, who kindly listened today maybe takes that uh, with you and kind of saying, hey, I can be a multiplicator. I am not, I'm not, I don't need to be passive. I, am, I can be out there. And yes, bad things will happen sometimes. Uh, there will be a man or whatever kind of or a manager kind of putting you putting you down. And then you stand up and say, okay, I'm, I'm not giving up because I'm stubborn. And uh, mm -hmm. I am actually have a right for mm -hmm. this seat on the table because I, I also want to make it right for the others uh, that come behind me. That's a really, really strong and good message. I think that you gave us some food for reflection to identify uh, who we are, what are our values and um, how we can impact others life in multiple ways, right? Not just in one way, yes. in one role, being a leader of our lives, being a leader of uh, the positions that you hold and improve and grow, being a leader in your community being a leader who which you want to become if you're in early stage of your career so thank you very much for this very honest and very authentic discussions that we had today with you i really appreciate you being very honest and open about your career path different things that you have learned on the way and uh, what would be the best way to get in touch with you if some people have questions and maybe we're shy to ask them in the chat if you are open for that And uh, if, you st if you have some time, you can also stay with us and everyone who is on Hopin, you can go to the networking area and um, connect with others in the chat. So yes, please go ahead. What would be the best way? Will LinkedIn work or um, what would be uh, how people could connect with you? 
I have a bad backlog at the moment on, on LinkedIn, but I'll, I will come to it, I, I promise. <laughs> so uh, uh, LinkedIn works. Um, I'm, I'm also active on Twitter, but it kind of you can also DM me there. Um, yeah. You can, yeah, so I can also kind of uh, share my, my email, um, my private email address. Uh, maybe let's connect via, via LinkedIn first. I so think LinkedIn I'm, would be a good start. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it takes time. And I know myself how hard it will be to be overwhelmed with work and when you have many message, messages on LinkedIn. So everyone, please keep keep patient. And it's not that easy to get in touch with the people who are let's say, have worked hard in their life to get to the level where you are right now, Florian. I'm very impressed with your work experience and everything that you managed to achieve and still being super humble about your experiences and your success. This is very fascinating. And I really, really, really enjoyed our talk today. Very happy that you found time for us to make it happen. Yeah, of course. And uh, thank you for inviting me. And one last thing, if you go to the network area, maybe, maybe also kind of leave the network area and you found yourself each one of your mentor. Yeah, or absolutely. Somebody you, you believe absolutely. you yeah. want to really connect with. I think uh, so yeah, when absolutely. I look at the, the people here who are actually attending, they're quite, quite a diverse um, uh, crowd. So yeah, I think absolutely. Oh, and there. Great. Thank you very much, Florian, and I'm wishing you a Thank great you. evening and absolutely looking forward to having you at our future events. And maybe we can do the, the second fireside chat. I feel like we still have many topics to discuss and, and you have sure. many insightful tips and uh, advice uh, to share with our audience. Thank you very much and I'm wishing you a Thank great you. evening. Bye bye. You too. Bye. Bye bye. So thank you very much for joining us today. I really appreciate your questions, your comments, your positive energy, and I hope you enjoyed our fireside chat today with Florian. A very different from our previous fireside chat, um, many new aspects we have discovered on inclusion, on authenticity, on what makes a good manager, a good leader, and how to be true to your values. I think that Florian left you with homework to uh, identify uh, what kind of leader do you want to become if you're in early stage of your career or uh, for example a good practice that i also like personally is to uh, make you know this list of understanding what uh, makes you for example fit, feel feel uh, bad today and um, to understand what kind of uh, activity maybe you need to do in order to Feel yourself with positive energy to be able to go ahead and do incredible things that you are capable of. And if you want to join more fireside chat like this, we are going to have a fireside chat on 29th of July with Siri Shilazi from Harvard Kennedy. Um, and uh, she, we are going to talk about unconscious bias. We are going to talk about um, women, uh, found female founders, uh, female, uh, basically uh, other topics connected to female rights and many more. We are going to announce it soon. Follow us on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn. We are sharing also many useful tips and many insightful um, topics to get inspired, to learn something new, to connect. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in and I'm wishing you a great day, a great evening, a uh, great morning, depending where you're joining us from and see you online. Bye-bye.